Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is kind of a unique problem that has a very specific way of solving it. And without using a specific way, you will have a hard time getting to the answer. What are we talking about? We have an object rolling down an incline and the object has moment of inertia. So let's read the problem and then we'll get to the solution. A solid sphere of mass one kilogram and radius one meter rolls without slipping on a fixed inclined plane with an angle of inclination 30 degrees from the horizontal. Two forces of magnitude one newton each parallel to the incline act on the sphere both at distance r being 0.5 meters from the center of the sphere as shown in the figure. The acceleration of the sphere down the plane is and we take g to be 10 meters per second squared. So, what kind of technique do we need to use to solve that? Well, it turns out we need to use two equations and solve them simultaneously. On the one hand, we use the equation torque is equal to I times alpha, where I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the angular acceleration. It is essentially the rotational equivalent of this equation, F equals ma and it turns out we're going to need both of those equations in order to solve the problem the reason why is it is the f the force of friction between the ball and the inclined plane that gives it the torque that will rotate it down the hill so it turns out that as it's as the ball is rolling there'll be a force of friction in this direction so let me point to the force of friction so this is it right here there's the force of friction, you cannot barely see that green, and let me write it as F sub FR, and it's pointing this way, giving the ball a, what we call clockwise rotation, making it roll down the hill, and then we have these two forces, which actually give it a counter torque, holding it up somewhat, probably not enough to keep the ball from rolling down, but to slow it down somewhat. So that is the torque equals the moment of inertia of the solid sphere, times the angle of acceleration. On this side, we have force equals mass times acceleration. And again, in each case, we're talking about the net torque and the net force. And we have to realize that the force, and let me see what color I can use on this one. Maybe I'll use brown here. So notice we have a force going this way. And that force is equal to mg sine theta. Remember, we have mg pointing straight down. We have the perpendicular comp component, which is mg cos theta. This one is mg. And there we have mg sine theta, which pushes the ball down. And now we have the friction force pushing in the opposite direction. So we can say that the net force equals the mass times acceleration. And the net force is going to be the force pulling it down the incline, mg sine theta, minus the friction force. And that equals ma. So if we solve this for the friction force, we have the friction force is equal to mg sine theta minus ma. Now we're going to need that because on this side, we'll end up with the friction force and we won't know what it is, but it will have to be equal to this depending upon how fast it's accelerating downward. So here we also write net torque equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Now when we substitute what we know here, so first of all, we have the net torque, which is the force friction acting on a line of action, which is a distance r, big R, one meter away from the center of the, of the sphere. So we have force friction times one meter, because it's force times distance. And we subtract from that the, the forces caused by these two right here. So we have two forces, they're one Newton each, and they act at a distance of 0 0.5 meters. So it's two forces acting uh, with, of one Newton each, so two times one Newton, times 0.5 meters, which is the distance from the line of action of each of those forces to the point of rotation. That equals the moment of inertia of a solid sphere, which is equal to 2 fifths m r squared times the angular acceleration, which by definition is linear acceleration divided by r. So make sure we don't get confused there. All right. So now that we have that, notice this is 1. This is 1. The mass is 1. So essentially, this all reduces to force friction 
minus 1 equals 2 fifths times 1 times 1 times A. So 2 fifths A. All right. Now, over here also, notice that we have the mass M here, which is equal to 1, because mass is 1 kilogram. So this can be reduced to force friction is equal to G sine theta. Now, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, so 0 0.5 minus A. Or, simply, uh, G is equal to 10, so this becomes 5 minus A. Because g is equal to 10 meters per second squared. So finally, I can then plug that into this equation right here, and this equation then becomes the following. So force friction now becomes 5 minus a. We have minus 1, minus 1 equals 2 fifths a, 2 over 5a. Moving this a across, that becomes 7 fifths a, 5 minus 5 is 4, so 4 equals 7 over 5a or a is equal to 20 divided by 7. When we divide that, we get a is equal to 2.7 goes to 20. 14, that's remainder 6. 60, 7 goes into 60. Uh, I think it's 8. 8, that's 56. Remainder 4, 40. 7 goes to 40, that would be 5 times 7 is 35. And so it looks like it's 555 five, five unending, or a equals 2.86 meters per second square. And so the answer then, when we come up here, it is 2.86 meters per second squared. So notice that these problems aren't that difficult if you remember that you'll solve these two equations simultaneously, solve for the unknown force friction here in terms of everything else in this equation, then you plug that in here to get rid of force friction, and then you can solve for the one unknown left, which is the acceleration. And that is how it's done.